Patreon request. What's good, J2R fan? We're back again with another reaction for you guys. I'm Jeremiah. I'm Johnny. So today we are checking out this Louis Thompson, all of these, vo all of those voices. <laughs> this is gonna be part four. But we get, before we get to be able to party dates for our family or it's the first time on our channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Patreon. All right, so if you guys haven't checked out parts one through three, definitely go check it out. If you guys want to go check, uh, if you guys want to check them out earlier, definitely sign up for our Patreon account so you guys can check it out earlier than what you guys see it now. Uh, but we're about to get into this part four of all of those voices. But what do you think about this, Jai? It's been really cool so far. So like the last episode, uh, the first couple episodes kind of like sad. Uh, last episode was like more happy episode. So I hope it kind of continues that way. I think always when you get like a, a, a happy part, there's always another sad part coming. So hopefully we don't, you know, it doesn't go that way. But yeah, I feel that it might. Uh, also, before we get into the video, if you are seeing this on YouTube or even on Patreon, it takes a little bit for us to get it up. We're having some problems with copyright. So just bear with us on that. But we're trying to get them up as quick as possible. And uh, yeah. All right, so let's get into the video. See what happens. Let's do it. Clever. Be careful. <laughs> Never ever look so fucking tall. <laughs> yeah, you'll never be that big again. Yeah. Until you next one. Let me uh, be the first to say congratulations because it's oh, he's on the sign down officially there. your album yeah. is yeah. out right now. Yes, yes, yeah. Congratulations, you. How's, how's, how's it feel? How's it feel to have it? It's a relief to be here. I mean, as I said before, it's been four years in the making, and what I was used to with One Direction was like an album a year, you know. So. I've had to be like patient and and like sensible and, and kind of you know understand the process. I feel like I've learned a lot along the way. But I think it took me a couple of years, 18 months, two years, to actually find my feet and work out who I am. Yeah, I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud of it. Yeah, all your singles have been fantastic. Oh, thank you. Uh, they've been streamed over a billion times. <laughs> a billion times. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. When I think of being a kid and when I think of growing up in Doncaster, the first feeling or the first thought that comes to my mind is obviously family. I've always been part of a pretty big family. Slept well? Uh, yeah, not well yeah. enough. Not long enough. <laughs> I got set back off at 12. Yeah, that's Oh, thanks. Oh, um, yeah. I want you to so show me these, Lou. What you got for us? You getting up? Getting up Are you showing Nan off to me again? Uh, no. no, I'm showing me off. Oh, oh amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the abs on that. <laughs> You're like a Bond villain. I know. I, yeah, did, yeah. I did have a body at one time. <laughs> what was he like as a little kid? As a baby? Yeah. Gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was good. And of course, he was on his own as a baby for seven years before Lottie came along. So he was pretty much the centre of it. He was the centre of attention for seven years. Um, but he was, he was lovely. He was, um, I won't, I won't tell you, Charlie, because I'll get upset. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> to say Jay didn't have a lot of money in the days when Lewis was little, everything that she possibly could do with him, she did. I was always amazed at what she managed to do with him. And, uh, yeah, they were very close. There have always been a fantastic bond between Louis and his mum. And of course, uh, in the early days, she lived in a little flat. My biological dad was never around, not at all, for my life. But I never yeah, felt bro. like I missed so we out thought we on were getting having into, like, the love of a parent because it kind stuff. of just doubled down with my mum there. Yeah, I always looked up to him, really, because he was, he was my big brother and I think he was quite protective over me. I think he was about six when I came along. And then Fizz was born two years later. And then the twins, Phoebe and Daisy. But I think for Louis, he always wanted a brother, and then he got his four sisters. At times, I liked being the only lad and being the lad that, you know, being the older brother to so many sisters. Louis's like made to be the brother of all of these girls because mm. he's just like, he's like, I mean, we used to think controlling and now we probably now just we think he's looking out for us yeah and he does look out for us and most of the time he's right yeah it wasn't until I got a bit older that I actually understood that the relationship that I had with my mum was really really special um, because and I think that's a natural thing you know she had me when she was 19 
and you know, it wasn't planned. You know, my mum was still kind of a kid, really, when she had me. And I think any situation like that, you, you, there's such a, a natural bond. And obviously, you know, I was, I, I was her first. But it was always just like a best friend relationship. Like, but I can remember when I lost my virginity. I literally rang my mum straight away, dead excited, as if you would, you know, telling any of your lad mates. God, mum's just, she was like Lottie, eh? Yeah, she, she one does. Fizzy, yeah, one night one night fizzy, she was like Lottie then, didn't yeah. she? Yeah, proper. I don't think I've seen pictures of the way she looks Oh, like that is baby. lovely, that, isn't it, eh? It's at school, the way that. So what, then, about 15 there, maybe? Eh. I mean, being that, you know, he had that kind of, like, such a close, like, relationship with his mom, like, that, you know, I mean, he lost his virginity, and the first thing he did was call his mom. Yeah. You know, he was so excited. I mean, that's a really, really tight, bonded relationship, so when she passed away, that had to be extremely horrible. Oh, yeah. Like, like worse than we thought, like, extremely horrible. Yeah. Well, she will have been, wouldn't she, yeah? Has she died her hair? Her hair was quite light, you know, Until for a while. Right, yeah, right. I, she may have done, but I don't remember yeah. her doing it. Oh, his mum was the biggest influence on him. Um, yeah. Just give me a minute. I mean, what, what we met, went through with losing. No parent should go through that. Losing their children before they go. And I always thought it would devastate Lou because he was so close. <laughs> and I think that's why he's so strong. Well, I'm like Tom you can't really imagine how some families can go through so much um, and come through it as decent people, really. But we, I think that's where we score. We, um, we do. We just move on and um, because we know that's what they'd want. There's one common theme that runs throughout you know, why I'm here today. And it and, and also why I like to think I'm relatively resilient now is because that my mum wouldn't have it any other way. So I, I she wouldn't you know, I wouldn't really be allowed to feel sorry for myself, but not in such a way where I'd bury my head in the sand. Like like where they were doing auditions for um the musical Greece. And I think I, I was on my way home that day and I called my mum, which is always what I do, and I'd be feeling a little bit kind of unsure. And it wasn't a great day for me. I didn't really introduce myself to anyone. And I felt pretty lonely going from being relatively social and, 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 and popular at my other school to like, you know, not really knowing anyone at this next school. And I remember saying to you, you know, I've had this notice board and I'm thinking about doing this audition, but the more I think about it, I don't want to do it. And she didn't give me an option. She's like, well, I'm going to come pick you up and drive you to your Greece audition. I didn't really know what to expect, to be honest. But fucking hell, like, I was, like, blown away when I, I did end up getting the lead role of uh, Danny. That was the moment, in fact. That was the moment where maybe I allowed myself to start dreaming. I've told you this, but when you did the second Grease production at the Civic Theatre, we got in the car to go home that night, and I remember you that, saying, this is what I want to do now for the rest of my life, almost like an epiphany. And you literally, it, you know, it went from there, you never looked back, but it was almost spine tingly to look back at that and yeah. think, God, yeah. how prophetic that actual one sentence was. Me going down to my X Factor audition was crazy, but still real life almost. So there must have been a time where it became harder for you to understand and comprehend the world that I was in, but it yeah. was running away with me. And, there yeah. was, and I know that mum often got frustrated because she went from policing everything I did yeah. to yeah. having zero control. Yeah. It was just one day, you know, yeah. it kind of changed. And I remember thinking that that 
It must have been difficult, especially with how protective she was, you know what I mean, always. Yeah. Yeah. Mum worried about you in as much as she worried about the um, knowing how, um, how much it means to you to be not the, the, the kingpin mm. of such, but to have an equal uh, <coughs> opportunity. And if you weren't getting it, she knew how much it would upset you. And, of course, it upset her if, she, if you were upset. Yeah, I think that's where I felt I'd done by where I didn't think that things were fair, you know yes. what I mean? And yes. that, was, that was difficult for me. Yeah. And also without having any kind of understanding of what I'm getting into, really, you yeah. know what I mean? Probably if they'd have analysed why you were like that, they might have liked you more, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. instead of just thinking you were a, a, a cocky. I had the luxury of a mum like mum, growing up in Doncaster, you know, it makes you a certain way. Yeah. It's very cool to see him like practicing at home though. Yeah. So will you enjoy being on stage tonight? No. We need to speak <laughs> like that. No, we won't, we won't. Um, but it bugs me because for years you've been crying about not being on stage. Yeah. Then when you're finally up there, you, you say you want to get off as quick as possible. You, well, I know, you but I feel... I am never good enough. Because uh, Elena, because the truth, the truth of it is, a lot of the time it isn't. It isn't. A lot of the time I'll go back and I'll watch, and it frustrates me that we'll stand in here and I'll do a great job, mm. and then I'll go back and watch TV performance. I'll be like, that's out of tune. I know my brain's not playing tricks on me when I listen to shit, and it's out of tune. Okay. This is what you gotta be because it's your head telling you that you don't deserve to be up there and you need to get off in a hurry. You are up there and you're doing it. You're singing tracks like Walls. That's not easy to sing acoustic. You're smashing, know, you're smashing know, it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know, I know. I'm also not saying that I don't think I'm capable of doing well. Because mm. I do. Mm. I just think there is this thing that I have to get over. Mm. You know yeah. what I mean? This... And it's a mental yeah. more than anything. Yeah. It's a confidence blow. That's Obviously, crazy how like, yeah. party you have an obligation that. to your audience. All oh, right. We're going to pause it there. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. I thought in this episode we were definitely getting into like the more happier parts and everything. Then we kind of went sad again. And I get it. You know what I mean? Obviously, it's a documentary about Louis Thompson and everything like that. And, um, but it's just like, it's it's like when it gets like good, it gets bad. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It, get, it gets good, it gets bad. I'm like, damn, bro. Like, and then you find out more stuff about him, like more stuff he's went through, like how close he was with his mom. You know what I'm saying? How he pretty much was so excited that he lost his virginity, he called his mom right away and everything. You know what I mean? And uh, you can just see like that family was like very close, like yeah. everyone. You know what I mean? And it's just, it's crazy. Like, I know, like, he definitely felt, like, some type of way when his, when his uh, mom passed away. I know it had to hurt him, like, so bad. Like, uh, and he even explains, like, uh, like how close, like, him and his mom were, you know, him being, like, her, her uh, first child at 19 years old, and they've always had, like, that really close bond. And it, it's just amazing, like, how he explained everything. And even, like, uh, what was it, his grandfather? His yeah. grandfather was crying, just, like, talking about how close they were and everything. So, I mean, even that, like, just speaks for itself right there. But... I mean, it, it's really cool so far, just like learning about Louis Thompson and everything. It really is learning about his family, how close he was like uh, with, with his mom and everything. But I'm just hoping like we start getting like some good sides to it, you know what I mean? But uh, I think it's really cool so far. I think it's really cool too as well, like how we got to the end of this uh, part right here, how like he, how hard he is on himself. Like he felt like he was out of tune, like whatever, uh, like a concert he was performing at, whatever the case might have been. So now he's like sitting there practicing. He's like, I got to get over this, you know what I mean? I got to like uh, sit there and like overcome like how I feel like maybe like uh, like on, not necessarily on stage, but he says like after or whatever when he watches the film, he feels yeah, like he's feels awesome. like he's out of tune. Yeah, so he just has to overcome that. But I just think it's cool like how hard he is on himself. I think that's what just makes greatness. You know what I mean? But I think it's dope so far. I really enjoy it. What do you think? Yeah, no, I mean just just watching more of this you know you're like man it's you know, happy things are happening and then all of a sudden bam he gets hit again and he you know goes down uh you know for you know a little while because it's so sad but um you know that obviously knowing more about him and his mom's relationship now now you kind of understand how hard it was you know because obviously it's hard to lose a parent 
But when you have a relationship with your parent like that, that close, it makes it so much harder. It's because they're not just your parent, but they're like your friend. And a lot of times, you know, a lot of people don't have uh, relationships with their parents like that, where they're like friends at the same time. So it's almost like he lost more than one person. Um, and then to be a uh, older brother of, you know, so many sisters and feel like like a responsibility for them and stuff like that. That's that's a lot to put on, you know, someone and, and not saying anybody put it on him, but probably they put it on himself, you know. So going through all that is just so much. And then, you know, trying to, you know, pick yourself back up and just like get back on the, you know, con doing the concerts and stuff like that and being hard on yourself. Like Jeremiah said, that's what makes greatness. And that's why he is who he is, partly because, you know, his mom put him on the path to success and he's continuing that himself which is you know shows a lot of character it really does definitely but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this reaction if you did make sure you hit the like button if you're not part of j2r family make sure you hit the subscribe button make sure you check us out on instagram facebook twitter tiktok and patreon